from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. And we're back here at the Mandalay Bay in somewhat beautiful Las Vegas where we're doing third day of VMworld on theCUBE and I'm Peter Burris and uh, I'm joined by my two lead analysts here at Wikibon with me. Jim Kabilis, who's looking at a lot of the software stuff, David Foyer, who's helping to drive a lot of our hardware research. Guys, you've spent an enormous amount of time talking to an enormous number of customers, a lot of partners, and we all participated in the Analyst Day on Monday. Let me give you my first impressions, and I want to ask you guys some questions here hear what you thought. So, uh, I have, it, this is you know, my third, I guess, VM world in a, in a row, and, and my impression uh, is that this has been the most coherent of the VM worlds I've seen. Uh, you can tell when a company's going through a transition because they're reaching to try to bring a story together and that sets the tone. But this one, Pat Gelsinger did a phenomenal job of setting up the story. It makes sense, it's coherent, possibly because it aligns so well with what we think is going to happen in the industry. So I want to ask you guys, based on three days of wandering around and talking to customers, David Foyer, what's been the high point? What have you found is the most interesting thing? Well, I think the most interesting thing is the excitement that there is over VMware. If you, if you contrast that with a two, three years ago, the degree of commitment of customers to VMware, the degree of integration they're wanting to make, uh, the degree, rate of change and ideas that have come out of VMware, it's like two different companies, totally different companies. Um, some of the highlights for me were the uh, RDS, the bringing from AWS to on-site, as well as uh, on the AWS cloud, RDS capabilities. I think that's a very, very interesting thing. That's the, the, the relational databases, services, the uh, MariaDB and all the other services. That's a very exciting thing to me, and a, and a, a, a hint to me that AWS is going to have to get serious about well, more is coming, cloud. and I, yeah. think it's, I think it's a really interesting point that after a lot of conversations with a lot of folks saying, oh, AWS, it's all going to go up to the cloud, and wondering whether that also was a one-way street for VMware yeah. customers, right. that now we're seeing it's much more of a bilateral it's, relationship. It's, it's a moving it to the right place. And that's the second thing, the embracing of multi-cloud by everybody. Uh, one cloud is not going to do everything. They're going to be SaaS clouds, they're going to be multiple places where people are going to put certain workloads because that's the best strategic fit for it. And the acceptance in the marketplace that that is where it's going to go. I think that again is a major change. So hybrid cloud and multi-cloud environments. And then the third thing is, I think the richness of the ecosystem is amazing. Um, the the Going on the floor and the number of people that have come to talk to us with new ideas, uh, really fascinating ideas, is, is something I haven't seen at all for the last, last three, four years. And so, I'm going to come back to you on that, but it, it goes back to the first point that you make, that yeah. there is a palpable excitement here about VMware yeah. that two, three years ago the conversation was, how much longer is the franchise going to be around? Jim, but, but now it's clear, yeah. it's going to be around. Jim, how about you? Yeah, actually, I'm a, unlike you guys, I'm a newbie to, to VM world. This is my very first. Remember, I'm a big data analyst. I'm a data science and AI guy. Um, but you know, obviously, I've been aware of VMware and have had many contacts with them over the years. My takeaway, my primary, and I like Pat Gelsinger's, I agree with you, Peter, a really coherent take. And I like that phrase, even though it sounds clucky and Pat kind of apologized, they are the dial tone to the multi-cloud. It, it, it sort of really gives you a strong sense for who else can you characterize in this whole market space, cloud computing, as essentially a multi-cloud provider who provides the unifying virtualization glue to help their cust to help customers who are investing in an AWS and maybe in a bit of uh, you know go adopting Google and uh, Microsoft Azure and so forth, providing a virtualization layer that's be above server virtualization, network virtualization, VDI, all the way to the edge. Nobody can put it all is putting it all together in quite the way that VMware is. 
Um, one of the my chief takeaways uh, is similar to David's, which is that in terms of the notion of a hybrid cloud, VMware with its whole what it's doing with RDS, but also projects like this project dimension, which is in, in project in progress, taking essentially the entire VMware virtualization stack and putting it onto an appliance for deployment on the edges, and then for them to manage it, VMware, uh, that's their plans as a as a end-to-end -end managed edge cloud service and so forth. Uh, wow, the blurring of public and private cloud. I don't even think the term hybrid cloud applies. It's just a blurring. The, the cloud, it's just the cloud. The cloud is the multi-cloud. The cloud is moving to the workload, the cloud's moving. The cloud's moving to the workload, the cloud's moving to the data, which is exactly what we've been What's saying for years. What's powerful is that they are halfway there in terms of that vision, halfway in the sense that RDS has been announced the, you know, on the, in, in, in VMware, and this project uh, dimension, they're well along with that in terms of the, pr the briefings for the analyst space. I'm really impressed for how they're architecting this. I think they've got a shot to really dominate. Well, I'll tell you, uh, so, so uh, here, here, I would agree with you, just to maybe provide a slightly different version of one of the things you said. I, I definitely agree. I think what VMware hopes to do, and I think they're not alone, is to have AWS look like an appliance to their console, to have Azure look like an appliance to their console. So through VMware, you can get access to whatever services you need, including your VMware machines, your VMs inside those clouds, but that increasingly their, their goal is to be that control point, that management point for all of these different resources that are building, and it is very compelling. I think that there's one area that I still think we need more from. As analysts, you know, we always got to look through sure. and what's, yeah. what is more required. And I hear what you say about project dimension, but I think that the edge story still requires a fair amount of work. Oh yeah. It's a project in place, but that's going to be an increasingly important uh, locus of uh, how architectures get laid out, how people think about applications in the future, how design happens, how methodologies for building software work. David, what do you think? What, when you look out, what, what, is, what, what is more is needed for you? So I think there are two things that give me a, small, a concern. The, the edge, that's a long-term view, so they got time to get that right. But the edge view is very much an IT view top-down. And they are looking to put in place everything that they think the OT people should fit in with. I, I think that is, personally, uh, not going to be a winning strategy. You, you have to take it from the bottom up. The world is going to go towards devices, very rich devices and sensors, lots of software right on that device, the inference work on those devices, and uh, uh, the job of IT will be to integrate those devices. It won't be those devices taking on the standards of IT, it'll be IT that has to shape itself to look after all those devices there. So that's, a, a, the, um, that's the main viewpoint, I think, that needs adjustment, and it will come, I'm sure, well, over time. But as you said, there's a lot of computer science, there's going to be an enormous yeah. amount of new partnerships that are going to be fabricated exactly. to yeah. make this happen. Jim, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. In terms of partnerships, one big, gap from both VMware and Dell Technologies partnerships and roadmaps and technology portfolios is AI. Now they have a project VMware called, another project called Project <laughs> Magna, which is really AI ops. In fact, I published a, a Wikibon report this week on AI ops. AI to drive IT service management end to end. They're doing some stuff, they're working on that project. It's just, you know, in the beginning stages. Um, I think what's going to happen is that VMware, Dell Technologies, they're going to have to make strategic acquisitions of AI solution providers to build up that capability, because that's going to be fundamental to their ability to manage this complex multi-cloud fabric from end to end continuously. They need that competency internally. That can't be simply a partner providing that. That's got to be their core competency, so. You know, I'm going to push in and give you the contrarian point of view. Okay. We actually had constant, we, this is beyond VMware. We've had a lot of conversations about this. Does that, is that a reflection of David's point about top down? buying things and pushing it down, as opposed to other conversations we've had about how the edge is going to evolve, where a lot of OT guys are going to combine with business expertise and technology expertise to 
create specialized solutions, and, is, and then VMware is going to have to reach out to them and make VMware relevant to them. Do you think it's going to be VMware buying a bunch of stuff? Or, and, and then creating those <laughs> solutions? Or is it going to be the solutions coming from elsewhere and VM ha VMware Adjusting has to become to more relevant to them? Now, you can still be buying a bunch of stuff to get that horizontal in place, but which, which way do you think it's going to go? I think it's going to be the top down. They're going to buy stuff, because if I talked to the channel, one of the channel people this morning about, what, you know, what they've got an IOT connected bundle and so forth they announced at this show. You know, the, I think they agree with me that the core AI technology needs to be built into the fundamentals like the IOT stack bundle that they then provide to the channel partners for with you know with channel specific content that they can then tweak and customize to their specific needs but you know the core requirements for AI are horizontal you know it's the ability to run neural networks to do predictive analysis anomaly detection and so forth this is all cross cutting across all domains it has to be in the core application stack they can't be simply something they source for particular channel opportunities it has to be leveraged across you know the same core tensorflow models for anomaly detection for manufacturing for logistics for you know customer relationship management whatever so are you saying are you saying essentially that then VMware becomes that horizontal play even yeah. though even if the solution providers are increasingly close to the actual action where the edge is I, I, I'm going to disagree with okay. you gently on that, but we can still be friends. No, no, you can punch <laughs> me in the mouth if you want. I, I can work it out here, Dan. <laughs> you know, I, I, can, I can fend you off. Don't worry about that, dude. <laughs> no, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm an I'm a OT guy at heart, I suppose, and, and I think that that is going to be a stronger force in terms of uh, VMware, but there will be some places where you, it will be top down, uh, but other places that where it, it's going to be need, needed to adjust. But I think there's one other very interesting area I'd like to, to bring yeah. up in terms of, of, of this question of acquisition. Um, what, what we heard about beforehand was excellent results and uh, VMware has been adding a, you know, a billion uh, uh, dollars a year in terms of free cash there, and they have 13 billion in short-term cash uh, there. And the, the refinancing from Dell is going to take 11 of that 13 and, and put it towards the, uh, uh, towards the, the, the company. Now you can- Towards Dell Tech. Towards Dell Tech, yes. Uh, well, just Dell, Dell as a whole, to, and, and uh, Silver Lake, so to, towards those partners. I, I personally believe that there is such a lot of opportunity that's going to be out there. If you take NSX, for example, it, it has the potential to do things in new areas. They're going to need to provide solutions in those new areas and aggressively go after those new areas. And that's going to mean big investments. And many other areas where I think they are going to need uh, acquisitions to strengthen the whole story they have, the whole multi-cloud story. We've been talking about this real-time operating system. I mean, NSX yeah. has a network routing virtualization backplane. I mean, it needs to go real-time, sub-second, guaranteed. They need, Absolutely. They need that end-to-end. -end big investments in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They need so, to go there. Yeah. So we're agreeing on that. And I, I, I get concerned that it's not going to be given the right resources uh, you know, that, to, to be able to actually go after the opportunities that they have genuinely created. It's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. So I think ultimately- Icebergs in the future. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I think what we're ultimately saying though is that there is going to be a solution, a set of solution players that VMware is going to have to make significant moves to make them relevant. And then the question is, what's the value story, what's the value proposition? It's probably going to be like all partnerships. Yeah. Some are going to claim that they are doing it all, some are going to, VMware is going to claim that they do more of it, but at the end of the day, VMware has to make themselves re relevant to the edge, however that happens. Mm -hmm. I want to pick up on NSX, because uh, I'm a pretty big believer that NSX may be the uh, very special crown jewel in a lot of this stuff. Mm. This notion of, Hybrid cloud, whatever we call it, let's just call it extended cloud, okay. for lack of a better word. I like it. Is predicated on the idea that I also have a network that can 
naturally and easily, not just bridge, but truly uh, multi-network, interoperate, internetwork with a lot of different cloud sources, but also a lot of different cloud locations. And there's not a lot of technologies out there uh, that are great yeah. candidates to do that. And it's, and, and, and I look at NSX and I'm wondering, is that going to be kind of a, a uh, and I, be, I don't want to take the metaphor too far, but is that going to be kind of a new TCP IP for the cloud, <laughs> yeah. in the sense that you're still going to run over TCP IP and you're still going to run over the internet, but now we're going to get greater visibility into jobs, into workloads, into management infrastructures, into data locations and data placement, and predictive movement, and NSX is going to be the at the vanguard of showing how that's going to work. And, and the yeah. security side of that, Very important. Is especially to be able to know what is connected to what and what shouldn't be connected to what. And to be able to, to have that built in. Well, we heard segmentation, yeah. you know, Seg micro yes, segmentation. Mi yes, the, absolutely. The yeah. Uh, they need, yeah, they need stateful structured streaming. In other words, Kafka, Flink, whatever. They need that to be baked into the whole NSX virtualization layer. Make it that much more programmable. Yeah. And that and provide that much better a target for applications. Yeah. All right, last question, then we got to wrap, guys. Uh, David, as you walk out the door, get in the plane, what are you taking away? What's your last impression? My last impression is one of genuine excitement, wanting to work, uh, wanting to follow up with so many of the uh, smaller organizations, the partners that have been here, and who are genuinely providing in this ecosystem a very rich tapestry of, of capabilities. That's great. Jim? My takeaway is I want to see um, their roadmap for Kubernetes and serverless. There wasn't, whole, last year they made an announcement of a serverless project. I forgot what the, the code name is. Didn't hear a whole lot about it this year, but they're going up the app stack. They got a Kube you know, distribution. They're, they're, you know, they're, if, if they need a developer story. I mean, developers are building functional apps and so forth, you know, in, 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 and they're also containerized. They need, a, they need a developer story and they need a serverless story and they need, to, they need to bring us up to speed on where they're going in that regard because AWS, their predominant partner, I mean, they got Lambda functions and all that stuff, you know, that's, that's the development platform of the present and future and I'm not hearing an intersection of that story with VMware's story yet. So my last thing that I'll say is that I think that for the next five years, VMware is going to be one of the companies that shapes the future of the cloud. And I don't think we would have said that a couple of no, years ago. No, we wouldn't. I, yeah. I, I agree with you, so you said yes. All right, so this has been the Wikibon Research Leadership Team uh, talking about what we've heard at VMware this year, uh, VMworld this year. A uh, lot of great conversation. Feel free to reach out to us. And if you want to uh, spend more time with Wikibon, love to have you. Once again, Peter Burris for David Floyer and Jim Kabilis. Thank you very much for watching theCUBE. We'll talk to you again.